Okay, so um, how do we uh, access the data? Uh, now that we have been able to configure one device, uh, it can either be on online or off online, offline mode. Uh, and now um, that we're recording data, and how do we access it? So uh, there are three different ways um, for uh, accessing the data in case that we have captured the data uh, on the platform. So um, either we have uh, can access it through web interfaces. In these uh, interfaces, it's like uh, the smartcitizen.me slash kits uh, with the map and the navigation that you probably already know. Uh, you can see the data of any device. Uh, either by browsing on the map or by knowing the ID. Uh, this ID uh, is unique to each device and is basically appended to the URL on smart citizen kit, uh, sorry, smart citizen.me slash kits. Um, basically, let me show you. This uh, ID uh, that I'm talking about is this number at the end of the URL. Uh, in this particular case, it would be 15158. And is, for instance, uh, the URL, oops, that data, the kit was deleted. Let's go to this one. So that URL, so that ID is in this particular case, for instance, 15618. And it's the ID of the device um, that you can just copy paste this URL or share it with anyone, and it will be directed to uh, the data that is uh, being stored. This is not the same as the token that we were talking about earlier, but they are linked. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between this uh, particular ID and uh, the token that you introduce with your phone. And in this or any other web interface that we create or that you can create as well, uh, you will see uh, uh, the data. Uh, for instance, in, in, in this particular case, you, you can see data being recorded in an hourly basis, and you have different uh, filters uh, for um, accessing the data in a very basic way and also comparing it uh, with other metrics. Uh, you can see the data from any device. As you can see, I'm not logged in in the Smart Citizen, and all this data is visible for anyone. But uh, through the web interface, this particular web interface, you cannot uh, download it. So there are other web interfaces that you can use. Um, for instance, uh, there's um, a dashboard uh, that, will, um, that we created recently uh, that can provide you with a different way of accessing the data than the one on the basic uh, or on the generic map. Uh, let's see if it uh, when it loads, and let me load as well on a different. Well, here uh, you see the different uh, kits that are currently posting data, and um, in any of them, uh, let's try for instance this one. Uh, we can uh, see the data uh, in a different way, not with the map, and uh, we can explore it. Uh, we can uh, configure uh, the plots uh, and tidy up a little bit the dashboard, etc., uh, and have different options. Even you can uh, get information on the kit or uh, download the data on CSV. In this case, you can download the data uh, that you are seeing currently on the dashboard. Um, and uh, basically, through any web interface, uh, you can access the data of any device. And uh, even you can, and we provide, as we will see in the later as, in the later column, that we provide an API for you to create interfaces in case that you want to make your own. Um, another way to access the data, which is a little bit more advanced, we are progressively increasing the complexity or the um, usability of the data that we uh, get on, on each interface is that you download uh, the CSV um, or, or data in a CSV format from the platform. You can do this from the data or on the data that you have on your kit, and you will receive an email uh, as soon as you get uh, the data uh, processed. And uh, I'll explain a little bit more on this uh, in a second. And then finally, you, we also expo uh, expose an API 
uh, which is a um, let's say the desired way in case that you are doing uh, data analysis in a more advanced way, because it provides you with access to all the data from any device uh, with custom requests, and uh, that can be accessed either through HTTP request or other programming languages such as JavaScript, Python, or uh, very likely a lot of you use R uh, for uh, data analysis. We already provide scripts for this, and it's potentially the best way for you to access data and later on plot it, analyze it, make reports, and so on. Uh, so we already talked about these web interfaces. Uh, the idea is that they are adapted to um, say uh, showing the data in different formats, uh, either on a computer, in an iPad, or a tablet, and a, on a smartphone, um, as well as dashboard or other interfaces that um, that we have uh, created and collected uh, over time. Um, if you want to download the data uh, from the platform, you can do so from your uh, kit uh, or your device uh, with uh, the download CSV button, and you will get an email um, with the data uh, after some minutes. This is only available for your, for your kits. And finally, um, let's say the most advanced way, but of course the most um, usable or, um, or the best way to access the data is through the API. So the API is our, our RESTful API that returns data in the JSON standard format. Uh, this is normally more intended for, uh, as we were saying, not citizen science activities, probably uh, at least in a, dissemination way, but more on, let's say, that you want to dig in the data and that you have time for it. Uh, the endpoints are on api.smartcitizen.me and the documentation are on the links here. Uh, Developer.smartcitizen.me would be the first place to go. And here we provide uh, different uh, scripts and modules either in Python or in R uh, for you to access the data uh, let's say in a programmatic way. Um, this is constantly evolving, uh, not the API, but these packages. Uh, so if you also, um, since we provide everything as an open source and a free um, um, uh, software resource, uh, you can uh, contribute to it uh, if you like, in case that you, for instance, make scripts for plotting data in R or in Python or any other uh, language uh, you like, so others can, can, can use it as well. So uh, how do we access the data if we capture data offline? So the data is available inside the uh, micro SD card on the, on, on the kit in CSV format. There's uh, a lot of files, um, one per day in the format of uh, as, as seen in the screen. Uh, and after that, uh, once you um, collect the data, you can also upload it uh, to the platform. The file uh, format uh, looks like this. So this is basically the first uh, seven lines of, of a CSV in there. Um, it has a short header, uh, the units, a small description, and then uh, it has a row um, that is very important for you not to delete in case you want to upload the data to the platform, because this row uh, has the sensor IDs that will be used to map the different columns to uh, the platform reading. So if you are analyzing the data on CSV, please don't delete the fourth row of, of the CSV files. And uh, after that, you'll see that you have the data um, in normal tabular format, and the timestamp is in UTC, uh, in ISO uh, format. So you see that, uh, in particular for Spain, this would be uh, now in, in summer time. It would be two hours before uh, the actual time that the data was recorded in local time. So it would be in UTC format, and it will depend on your location, uh, the type of conversion that you have to apply. Uh, for this uh, timestamp. If you uh, upload this data to the platform, it will be, be automatically um, corrected to local time. If you use the platform upload and the point in the platform that you selected is in the time zone 
that you um, that you uh, select that uh, that is actually when the data was recorded. So this is somewhat important to select at least uh, the time zone uh, that you are in when you select the data on the map because then this timestamp will be converted to local time uh, once uh, the data is uploaded. Finally, you see here to the right side that there's in the, part, in the columns of the PM uh, nulls. Uh, these nulls are the way of specifying that there's no data in that column. Um, and that might be uh, due to uh, different reasons. In this particular case, it's not because the sensor had a problem, but because the data is recorded in um, instead of every five minutes, or in, in, in case, uh, in this particular case, it's not every sensor interval, but the data is recorded less frequent so that uh, we save battery, for instance, for the PM, for the particular matter um, sensors, because they consume a lot of power. Finally, um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, you will see some, what we could say, uh, weird data uh, on the, or weird files on the SD card. Uh, that do not end with uh, .csv, but that end with .01, .02, .03. But they have the same uh, date in the name. So um, this is because uh, whenever the, the kit is uh, reboot or restarted, it will create uh, a new file, uh, a new CSV file, and rename the one that it was using before the reset um, to uh, 0 .01, 0 .02, 0 .03. This is uh, done only to prevent uh, corruption on the data. And um, you can basically convert uh, these extensions to .csv by making sure that, the, that you don't overwrite all the files. So you can replace this with um, uh, underscore 01.csv, underscore 02.csv, and then you can join all the data, and it will be the data for that day. If you use uh, the platform or if you use uh, scripts like um, the ones that we provide, uh, you can concatenate all this data in an automated way in case that you want to, um, uh, let's say, look at uh, large amounts of data so that you don't have to do this manually since it's a very uh, tedious process. Um, again, uh, this is done every time that the sensor or the device um, resets, meaning that uh, it boots uh, again and it starts recording data on uh, either on the SD card or on Wi-Fi mode. 